Hi, it's Dina Tollefson and welcome to my studio. I'm so glad that you're here today. Today's going to be a great one. We're going to be working with this reference photo and creating our own version in a painting. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm so glad that you're here. So let's get started. So the colors that we're using today, so I've got a little Masterson Stay Wet palette here and I've already loaded the colors that we'll use for today. I'm using um, Golden Heavy Bodied Acrylics and the colors that we're using are Titanium White, Primary Yellow, Diorylide Yellow, Pyro Orange, uh, this is Yellow Ochre, Napthal Red, Alizarin Crimson, and then this color, which I typically don't use in my paintings very often, because I've got a small tube of that, uh, Medium Magenta, um, and then we've got French Ultramarine, Thalo Blue Red Shade, Dioxazine Purple, and Mars Black. So these are all the colors that we'll need. We'll mix the colors uh, for the rose from this basic set of colors. Look at this set over here. So this is a 9 by 12. I've gone ahead and drawn the overall shape of um, this 9 by 12 canvas. Made, um, I've played around a little bit with the proportions and made this a little bit larger. Um, just drew, you know, with a pencil on uh, directly on here, and I've got an eraser for any extra marks we might want to wipe off. And now the brushes for today, I uh, I like to use a synthetic soft golden Taclon brush, and different companies make these um, using variety of um, wash size, like a flat. I call it a wash if it's just like a flat with kind of shorter bristles. Um, some round brushes. Uh, you'll need a liner brush. This is uh, what you use. A got a long, thin um, set of fibers. Uh, you can use that for little details and to sign your name. And, and then filberts. These are uh, basically like a flat, halfway between a flat and a round brush. It's got a curved edge and then also has um, a little bit of thickness to it like a round does, but it's got the flat control um, that like a flat brush does. So I like to use a variety of different um, sizes of brushes and different shapes of brushes in the painting. And then some buckets of, just clean buckets of water and a palette knife and some paper towels to wipe off um, any extra paint that we might have. So I um, wanna start by mixing up some colors and you might notice that I'm starting with a white canvas. Typically I start with yellow ochre over everything, but in this case, because this rose is so light in color, I didn't want to put the yellow ochre on and then have to come back and put white over the top. So, so we'll start with, the, um, with just the white canvas today. So let's mix up some initial colors here for our rose. I'm gonna also talk about also where we see light and dark and warm versus cool. So we'll get into that in today's painting, but I'm seeing, for example, some warm areas over here, some cool areas, some light versus dark. We wanna really emphasize that in our painting. So starting with, uh, let's get a little bit of this medium magenta and I want to mix up some a variety of different colors that are going to describe our rose. And let's start with maybe this, um, let's start with maybe these lighter portions. So we need to mix up a very light color. We'll add a little of the diorylide yellow, some of this color here for some very light marks. That's way too yellow, so I'll go back and add more of our white. So I'm looking for a light, warm color, and I'm choosing not to make it as bright. I'm going to try and emphasize here the warm versus the cool colors. So we'll get this going here, and then we'll also make a little, say, a little bit more of a cool version of that by adding some of the pink. We can add a highlight color. So just mixing up some light and dark versions of everything. This can be a middle color. Okay, 
So in getting all of these colors together, that's a nice color. Then going in with the red, we can make an even deeper color. Some of these deeper, darker colors. And we can go with the pink and we can add some of the alizarin crimson and make an even darker color. All right, so I'm liking this set of colors that we have. I'll just dip my knife into the water, get that nice and clean. And now we're ready to start um, putting some of our color on. So I'm gonna start with, uh, let's grab this brush here. This is a half inch, um, just a wash brush or a flat brush. Dip it in the water. And I want to start, I think, with this section maybe in here. Let's get this painted first. And just following the basic shapes that we see. And then I see a little bit of that same color maybe up here. And I see some of that over here as well. And then maybe a bit of it up in here. So just starting to put these some of these colors where we think that we're seeing them. And I see some of this color out here as well. But just almost like a patchwork, we can kind of lay in the colors. Now this is a direct method of painting. Uh, so oftentimes I'm using a layering process. This is more of a direct method of painting. We're gonna do layers, but we're gonna build up these layers kind of just softly and over time. Um, then we can go in with this darker. So we have this maybe darker color here. And I'm just uh, thinking about only where the dark is here. We see some dark here, a little triangle of color here. Let's get that mark. And on roses, the nice thing about roses are every rose is a little bit different looking, so you can kind of put your petals where you like them. Um, if you don't have the petals exactly as they are, you know what, it's your rose and you can kind of do what you like. <laughs> so, um, you know, don't stress too much if the colors are not exactly in the spot that you think they should be. You can always adjust things later. I'll just softly get some of this color going here and up over here as well. Now another approach would be to just go in with an overall basic color and then put the colors on top. That's another approach to do it. I like to kind of go in and lay the basic colors first. So here's this kind of this color, which will be a nice transition color and the softer areas kind of, since this color is still wet, we can blend easily. And out here we see a lot of that color back behind here and also I there's a rose that's behind back over here I'm gonna um, decide we'll decide later as we go in but I'm thinking we'll maybe move that flower to up here or just leave it off entirely uh, because it uh, to me it looks a little bit like the other rose other part of the rose and I want to kind of differentiate between the two all right so now with this middle color I'm gonna go in with this middle color and fill in where we have our light areas. And then what we can do from there is then add additional detail and layering. So let's go in with this color. And then again, if uh, I'm not necessarily following the, the reference photo exactly, just using it as a guide, um, what we can do is kind of just have our own interpretation of the use this just basically as a shape guide. Coming in through here, and we can put petal edges. Those are all details that will go in later. But right now, just trying to block in the basic shapes of what we have. So I'm following also while painting, um, think about when you're painting to get the, um, think about the direction that the petals are. So as we're putting paint on, 
I'm gonna try and follow the basic um, anatomy of the flower, the basic shape of the flower. Roses can be tricky because of all of the little nooks and crannies that they have. If you just kind of take it as a general shape and then add your petal details at the end, it's a lot easier to handle it that way. And here's where an underpainting is helpful. You get this, get the canvas covered first with just the basic colors that you want to use. Then down in here, it's uh, quite light, so I'm going to reserve that section down here. This white area, we want to preserve that white. So let's just come in with here, and then we'll do as we're working on it. All right, so now we're getting the basic colors. And what we can also then do is think about, oh, I want to get some color here too. Um, want to think about um, contrast. That's, I think, what makes painting so pretty is when they have a nice contrast between light and dark. And here on the background, we're going to have sharp edges here and here back in the area that's not as in focus. Going to do just soft, soft edges. So just a small amount of paint on the brush and when you're doing your roses you can literally put whatever colors you want to use if you want to put a color somewhere that's not on your reference photo it's it's your painting and you can you can do it however you like now let's work a little bit on our stems so to make these stems you can start with this um, a lizard crimson and I'm going to follow this edge here. So I'm going to think about uh, not doing a straight this way, but uh, making the marks like this. And I'm doing the stems not exactly, again, following, not trying to necessarily follow the, uh, the photo directly, but just getting it in the general proportions and general location that they are here. And over here I see some um, kind of a bright orangey kind of a color. We can put that in our stem as well to indicate where the light, the direction of the light is coming. And then up here as well, where it's gonna be light. Then dark over here, we can use some dioxazine purple and put that on the opposite side to show the dark area. Nice contrast between the light and the dark. So now we have a lot of pink and purple and which what we need to also um, turn our attention to the greens. So let's change our bucket of water over here and let's mix up a nice set of greens. So we'll get some of our yellow ochre and mix in some black. We can get make kind of a nice olive color adding some of the primary yellow. We can add phthalo blue red shade to that and make a bright green. Now that green is a little bit um, bright and garish so we'll need to tone that color down. We can tone that down by adding some black. There we go. That's a better color. It's a nice color. And then add more of the yellow to that. To make a really nice light green. A lot of yellow will make an even lighter green. Let's take this um, this large brush. So this is a number 10, a large round brush. Dip that in the water and I want to just start to lay in these initial greens so the colors will really change once we add um, our greens in. And we we'll also can get some gray colors. So let's also mix up a bit of a gray. Gray is also a wonderful color uh, to have in your painting. It's a nice neutral color, especially with these some of these brights that we have here. All right, so let's just start out. We can start out with some of the gray. We'll put the gray in here first. Let's put some gray up in here too. We're gonna just get some of our colors, dark, deep, dark colors up near and kind of over and softly over near 
our roses and I'm just kind of thinking about, okay, where, what might we have some darks? Where might we have some lights? We'll mix in a little yellow ochre or some warmth. Again, thinking about light versus dark and warm versus cool. So the yellow ochre is, is a color that's a lot like, an, it's a neutral and um, yellow ochre is almost like a, you can think of it like a, another version of gray. And I'm also gonna allow this, um, allow the background color or our surrounding color and allow that to go up onto the flowers themselves. And then we can, in our layering process, carve those shapes back out again. So we allow your colors to overlap and that makes for some nice soft edges. Just nice and free and easy. Let's introduce some of the green. And I'm not worrying too much about if I overlap too much on the flowers because we can always layer things back. I really want to do is make sure that we've got colors that are working well together and then our shapes we can pull those shapes back out again so we'll overpaint and then we come back and underpaint again afterwards just a layering of color and then this stem area we can draw that in as a detail later i can see already that we we're going to need to layer our darks we're going to need to make some greens that are even darker yet. But for this initial pass, this is good for the initial pass here. And I'm also just allowing, I'm also wanting the brush strokes back here to be nice and loose and interpretive. So I'm not gonna stress over like, oh, if this color, should that color be there or this color not be there? Um, because it's a painting, uh, we want it to, I'm not gonna try and go here for photorealism. So if I was trying to do photorealism, you know, this would be a completely different approach uh, on the painting. But, um, but here, really just thinking about having it look painterly, painterly meaning we want our brush strokes to show, uh, we want it to have an emotional um, response. Getting these brush strokes in, using a large brush and just um, being free and easy with it, that's important <clears throat> to get a, a painterly look. So we have kind of these middle colors and I'm, I'm now squinting down and I'm seeing that we want to create some even darker, while this is still wet, uh, let's create some even darker green passages. So let's add more black, let's add more of the blue, we'll get some of the French ultramarine in there as well, and create some really nice dark areas dark colors. Green, add a little yellow ochre. There, that's a good color. Rinse off the palette knife. And let's just put in some dark sections here as well. When we use dark next to light, and it really brings out the contrast or it brings the flowers into life. You need to make sure you have enough dark in your painting. That's what really sets up a nice contrast. Just make this whole section here a little darker. And up through here, let's have some darks as well. And then oh, another thing we wanna think about doing is connecting the dark. So when you have a dark section, it's always nice to connect it. In other words, uh, have it have a path. So the dark over here, if we can think of the dark all the dark colors just kind of have them relate to one another or connect in some way. Now let's have a, another dark section up through here so we really want to get a contrast. Now that um, petal up over here, let's make a petal doing this like that. I'll dip my brush in the water. And again, I'm looking to have my brush strokes show here, so I want this to be nice and loose and free, interpretive. So that area needs to be dark. And then if we need to lighten up any passages, we can add a little bit, let's add a little bit of our gray back in over here to lighten that up again. Let's get some gray here. This gray feels a little bit to me like it could be almost like sky or it could feel like a little bit like the idea of um, 
air, like the air or the air around the flower. All right, so now, uh, now that we have this part going, now what we can do is come in and start to put some details in. Now that we've got this dry, let's go in with a smaller brush. We can use uh, either one of these brushes. Let's come in with a small brush and start to do some details. So I want to think about this little wavy edge here. Um, let's go into our nice dip in the water. Let's add a little white to our light color here. Make a very light color. And let's draw in this nice wavy little shape here. And let's come down, come over here, and down here we have a nice petal coming across here so we can get some highlights in there and then just gonna blend that edge. If we need to do any blending, we can blend that. But um, just to start to get some definition here. Then on um, this petal goes up, comes across like that, and then over. Then we have some light. And over here, I see like a little, um, Spot. We're going to go in with this dark color and add some details in here. So let's go into the dark and get the shape, the outer shape of the rose established like that. And let's have this curve in a little bit down like this and take this dark in over here. Make a nice notch for this spot and bring this petal up over here and through here, darken that. And then down over here, this is the rose hip. So this is the area that after the rose is done blooming, then you get this rose hip a nice dark established for that coming down into it. And for here we'll do, these are called sepals, these dark sections in here. This actually should be more of a, of a green, a lighter green. But just starting to define these a little bit more. Same thing over here, let's get our sepals going. and then the rose hip and the dark spots. We'll get thinking about when I'm doing this, I'm thinking about just trying to indicate where the lights and the darks are and not, and, and then the basic shape that they form. Okay, and so the same thing here, we've got some darks. So now coming back over to our light areas, let's go back to our light areas. We had just a moment with the darks. <laughs> Let's go into the lights and further refine. So I'm adding a little titanium white to the pink. And let's draw in a couple of details. So this edge also has some light. Then this petal in the middle is kind of a focus petal. Let's get an edge here. And we're not going to draw in every petal. Let's just get a few of them indicated where the light is hitting. So these petals come around this way, so we'll get the angle right. And I don't want to just have a bunch of lines that are in here. We want to try and make, make some shapes in here as well. So let's get a line going like that. Okay, now back behind here, we need some light. And here as well, the outside edge of the rose. And as we're working, we can, uh, you know, really continue to add as many or as few or as many details as we want. There, I got the white. There's too much white there, so let me go back over and get rid of some of that. 
All right, so now um, we can think about also glazing. So let's get our glazing medium out and we can add glazing medium to any of the paints that we have, any of the colors. So we'll just put a puddle of it here. When we dip the brush in, this thins out the, the paint color. So I um, want to now go in and uh, start to additionally add some more details. So let's get the glazing medium in with some of this pink and we can lay the pink over and make some very nice soft details. So these roses are so delicate and they have a lot of soft edges. They also have some hard edges. So where the soft edges and the hard edges meet is where we want to think about putting our glazing. Okay, and then down here on this, we need to get a sharper edge down here. So let's go in with just the straight paint and indicate an edge coming up from down here. You can use this really nice dark color here, down here to describe that. And with the red. And the color gets warmer as it's moving out here. So let's glaze with a little bit of that as well. Let's get those colors a little richer and blend them a little bit. But glazing medium is really ideal if you want to blend your colors and add really nice soft details. So up in here, let's get a, let's get some of the medium and draw in a detail with this darker color and a soft edge and make this a nice, super soft edge. There we go. And up over here, we can have a bit of a dark Add the medium, can add a little bit of a dark detail with a petal. So let's get a dark detail just right up there. And then through here, we can do the same thing. We can put in a little bit of this red as a detail. Get the red up and through there. Just kind of putting the glaze where we are seeing these warmer red colors. Then up, some of that's up back behind here. And then in, we'll put that up right in here as well, like that. So everywhere that we're seeing this other color, we can get, whoops, that, that red is too light and too bright. So let's go in with this darker color and glaze that. There we go, this color should be here. So let's glaze with a little bit of diaxazine purple at the bottom edge of the rose here. Uh, we can put some of those details in up over here as well where we're seeing where the petal has a little dark crevice. I'm gonna put some, just some light areas here. A bit of that, just move a little bit of that color up here as well, the green. Just for, just because we can, it's our painting, we're gonna stick a little bit of a bright color in here. Let's do it. Just for kicks and grins. All right, so now I have continued uh, refining this with the glazing medium. And I, what I wanna show you now is uh, how we can address some of these, getting these really kind of a soft little blobby edge, a soft, uh, soft effect back here. So how we'll do that is we'll um, grab some of our glazing medium and just apply it directly to, whoops, this is stuck here. Just apply some glazing medium over into these areas that we want to make super soft. And um, well, we can put glazing medium in with the paint, but we can also just directly paint it on top of the section that we want to make really soft so we'll just get this on here as a base and wipe off the extra 
And what this is gonna do for us is this is gonna help us get really soft edges. So you can see when you put paint on, you get a hard edge and it is very difficult in painting to get a soft edge. So how we'll do that is we can just take some of the color, we'll take some of this color here and just make a soft form. So we're just trying to get the idea of the flower. So back for this flower, this section in here, we can glaze in, add some of the, some of the glazing medium, just make very soft edges <clears throat> and try not to have, we're gonna put some detail in, but we're gonna try and make it soft edged detail. So we'll put the colors where we see them. And over here, just make this really nice and soft. And let's glaze with a little of this magenta color over here. Just soft, soft, soft. We're gonna have this flower just kind of disappear. And then this flower will give some detail. So I see some gray right here. Let's gray this in over there. And I see that same dark color here as well. See a lot of gray over here. Let's get some of that gray going back through here. Just nice and soft, but it is hard to, um, it's hard to do this without glazing medium. So this glazing medium is super duper helpful in this glazing down process. Add a little of the glazing medium to this puddle here. And we'll just get that color over the top where we want to and just make it as subtle and as delicate as we want. I have a hard edge here, so let's go in and adjust this hard edge right through there. And let's put some, I mean, when you're working on your own painting, you can put whatever shapes you like to describe your flowers. Just put a nice dark, shape right in there and dark through here and we're getting more and more realism as we get closer into the focused area add a little bit of this dark here as well get some yellow ochre back through this section like that there we go this edge is too hard so i'm gonna just soften that so let's also make a little bit of a soft edge here. So let's add a little bit more glazing medium on the top of that. And come in with some of this, some more of this gray. Grab some of the gray from here. Add a little glazing medium. And I'm taking the brush on the side so that we don't make a hard edge. Just come in. Lay that over the top and we can come back with the magenta and just create some really soft shapes. And let's soften over here. So let's get the glazing medium on the top first and then come back with this background color and bring that over top like that. And back over here, this is a little bit on the orange side. So let's just Glaze that down a little bit as well. And over here, let's add a little more definition to this one, a little bit of pink. Back in through here, some glazing medium. And we can put just a little bit of a brighter spot here. Soften all those edges. Green. This, uh, this bud is pretty young, so we're just gonna have a little bit of green with that. 
add a little green back here as well. And we need some more dark. All right, so basically just keep going until you get the effect that you're looking for. And I feel like we're getting close here. Back through here, let's get a little bit of an edge. Add a little white. So now we are ready to sign the painting. So let's get a liner brush ready. Dip the brush in the water and bring it over to our black, Mars black, and get an inky consistency of color. Do a little test there, that looks good. All right, so now we're ready to sign. All right, so we have our finished painting and I wanna thank you so much for being here today. It's been wonderful having you here and I hope that you'll come back and see me again soon. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I love seeing you and hearing comments from you and love it that you're part of my art family. So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson and all my best to you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, my art club members. I appreciate you.